So to diagnose this TTR, we went through four things. We went through the battery and the electrical components. We went through the spark plug, the air filter, and the carburetor. Um, it's a very common problem. Nine times out of 10, if you're a little 50, will not start. It's the carburetor. So that's gonna be the bulk of what we do in this fix, is fix that carburetor. So in this fix, I did get pretty deep into the carburetor, but I wanted to just fill you in as to what the tools I actually used through the entire job. Didn't have many tools at all. I had a Phillips head screwdriver, a flat head screwdriver, two Allen keys in both a three and five millimeter, three box wrenches, eight, 10, and 14, three sockets, eight, 10, and 12, a pair of pliers, and an air compressor. You can use compressed air, but I used an air compressor with this type of nozzle on it just to blow through the passages. That's all I needed. So really only a few bucks and tools. So before we start to work on the carburetor, before we really pull it out or mess with the jets, we wanna make sure we turn this fuel switch off. If we don't turn this off and we pull the carburetor out, you may start leaking gas everywhere. So let's go ahead and turn this switch to off. Make sure that the arrow that's on the knob points to off. Usually it's in a horizontal position, so just check your manual for that to make sure you know that which is off. And then I like to drain the carburetor. There's often a little screw at the bottom of the carburetor there. And when you turn that screw, it'll have all the excess fuel that's in the bottom of the carburetor come out of this drain hose right here. So I'm loosening this screw, draining the gasoline out onto the shop towels. This will empty out any of the bad gas or old gas that's in the carburetor. That leads me to believe stuck pilot jet. It's the smallest hole inside the carburetor, probably clogged with just some ethanol. Happens when the gas gets older. So let's pull the carburetor off and we'll take a look at those jets. Make sure the carburetor is as empty as it can be before you take it out. Now, when I clean the carburetor, I like to pull it all the way out. Um, so from this side, this is the left side of the bike. You have this cam chain adjuster that kind of gets in the way of getting the carburetor right on, this, on the left side. So let's take a look at the other side of the bike, the right side, and see what that looks like. The exhaust is in the way. But the good news is the exhaust is held in with two bolts into the cylinder head and then one bolt up here. But the whole exhaust canister can come off in just a couple seconds. So let's take that off and then get to the carburetor. Be careful when you drop it away. You don't want to damage anything, but it should just slide right off. So now with the exhaust off, that carburetor is really exposed. It's easy for us to get to. So on the TTR50, the back clamp is a size three. I do really like these T-handles. I actually got this set from Harbor Freight for like $8. So with the carburetor slid out, you can see right here, hopefully it'll focus. That is one of the main intake ports. The yellowing that you see around it is when the gas starts to evaporate, it leaves that residue and that gets really sticky and that can fill up the holes and make sure that the gas doesn't get through. Something else I like to do before I take the whole carburetor apart, I really hope I can get this to zoom in for you. On the inside of the carburetor, you can see when you turn the throttle, the valve goes up and down. There is a little needle inside of that. I don't think it's showing on the camera, but you can actually see that residue on the needle too. So that's an indication. We should take this whole carburetor off the bike and clean the entire thing. Now to do that, we have to disconnect a few things. We have the fuel line, we have the, the carburetor heater, which is actually a strange thing that Yamaha likes to do, but we also have to remove the throttle cables. So I'm gonna pull those things off. I'll try to get it on film and we can take this to the bench and do a full cleaning. All right, so I'm gonna start by removing the fuel line. There's just a little clamp on that. You may need to use pliers. Hopefully you can also get it off with just your fingers by squeezing it. I do always like to keep shop towels around just in case. We did turn off the fuel petcock, but just in case it leaks, we wanna be ready to catch the fuel as it comes off. Sometimes you do have to twist the fuel line to get it to break free. And once you get to the edge of it, try your best not to spill any fuel. See, just a little bit comes out, but not much. All right, there is a choke on this as well, and so we have to use a 14 millimeter box wrench. Take the 14 millimeter, unscrew the choke, 
the choke should come up from the carb body pretty easily. I'm gonna remove this panel so that my hand stops hitting. The radiator shroud is held on with two Phillips head screws. One is a plastic push pin type and the other is a regular screw. And there's one in the back of the tank as well. I forgot about that one. I'm gonna take the camera off for this part. So the choke is this device here that goes into the carb body. Inside of the carb body, there is a, what appears to be cable lock holding the cable in place. So I have to kind of finagle to get that cable out. I've not had difficulty pulling a carburetor apart as much as I have had with this one, but it's the first time I've done it. So I wanted to make sure I showed you guys too. To get the, the throttle cables off the carburetor, you do have to remove them from the throttle tube. So just keep that in mind. As I mentioned before, I do like to take carburetors completely apart to clean them. When it's on the bike, you can actually remove the bowl just by taking off these four screws, pull the bowl casing off. You can get to the jets and you can clean it okay from there. But I think I mentioned before, these ports in here looked pretty grimy. Um, so it's definitely something I wanna take completely apart and clean it as best as possible so that I don't have to do it again. Um, and as I mentioned before, Getting the throttle cables off was kind of a pain, so I want to show you how to get this whole assembly off too. This is what spins with the throttle cables. So you twist the throttle, this spins and opens up the inside of the carburetor, like that. But it's actuated by this little cam on the top here, so as you spin it, it lifts up the main needle. There's a Phillips head screw. When you remove that screw, you can then pull out the the plate that has the throttle cables on it. So this screw comes out. And then you can just slide this towards you. There is a spring on it, so be careful about the spring. It's not a very high tension spring, but it does twist when you pull it out. Pull that out, and you've got that plate off. There are three hex keys, Allen head screws that take this cover off. I would highly recommend pulling this off if you're gonna clean the whole thing. I like to clean my carburetor in a vat of carb cleaner rather than just spraying through it. I feel like that gets a, a good clean to it rather than just spraying through. So with these three screws out, this plate comes off. Um, as with any type of carb cleaner, you want to avoid spraying on O-rings. So there is an O-ring here. Make sure you pull that off before you clean it. Inside of this opening, there is another seal, a rubber seal. Go ahead and pull that out before you clean it too. Inside, it appears to be just brass. There's a brass bushing in there. That should be fine inside of the carb cleaner, but the rubber itself, you wanna remove. Um, I did pull the drain hose off. The, carb, the, uh, the choke, I did get the choke out. It did take some spray and carb cleaner and just wiggling it a bit and the choke did come out. It's not held in with anything, but it was because of the, the old gas. You can see it kind of got corroded and, and grimy on top. It just got stuck inside. So we definitely want to clean that part too. Um, so now we can take off the, the carb bowl. When you tip it upside down, it will drain out some extra gas even though you drained it before. Just be cautious of that. Use some force, push down on these screws. They can and will strip out pretty easily if you're not pushing down. The recommendation is to use what's called JIS screwdrivers. I believe it's Japanese industry standard. Please correct me if I'm wrong in that. I do not actually know what the acronym means, um, but I do not own JIS screwdrivers. Um, if you have some, fantastic. If you have some, chances are you don't need to be watching this video. But uh, regular Phillips head screwdrivers will work perfectly fine in these screws if you are very careful about not stripping them. Uh, stripping them is the biggest concern. It has to do with the depth of the head. So with these four screws out, there are washers on them too. So be cautious of the washers, make sure they stay on. And let's see what it looks like inside. Oh yeah. So that gunk that we saw on the inlets is all in the bowl too. And I wish you could smell this through the video. This is bad gas too. So chances are I'm gonna to wanna to drain the gas tank and start with fresh fuel. 
So in the carburetor itself, you have two jets. You have the main jet, which is the bigger one, and then you have the pilot jet, which is the little one. The pilot jet is what will really help the bike get started. That's what sucks the fuel through just to get the bike going. And because it's so much smaller, it can get very clogged with this gunk stuff. So if the bike sits for too long, that pilot jet is chance, chances are that's what's causing the starting issue. So I'm glad we pulled this apart. I will take the jets out, we'll soak them in the carb cleaner. Um, I'll go cool down because it's super hot in the garage, so I'll go cool down while these are soaking, and I'll come back and I'll blow, blow some compressed air through it, and uh, we'll re re reassemble it pretty quick and hopefully get this up and running soon. So this pilot jet is completely clogged. You should be able to see light through it. As you can tell, there is no light shining through that at all. So definitely need to clean that. All right, let's pull off the main jet and see what that one looks like. But it is also clogged. So with the float here, the float is the black plastic piece that goes up and down. This is what actually controls the fuel coming into the carburetor. We wanna make sure we take that off before we clean the whole carburetor because it's plastic. Um, this pin, there's a pin that goes through here. That's what holds the float in place. Sometimes you can just use your fingernail to pop it through. If you don't have fingernails, you may need to use a pair of pliers or a screwdriver. Um, just be careful with it. Be gentle. Obviously with anything with the carburetor, we need to make sure we're careful about it. So let's try to get this out. Oh, there we go. I broke it loose. There we go. Just goes to show you how sticky gas can be. All right, so when you pull the float out, there is a little, what's called a needle inside of it. That little needle has a rubber tip on it. That rubber tip is what controls the flow. This is pretty gross looking too. Um, if I had the ability to, I would really want to replace this. Um, the rubber itself does go bad. Uh, so this is something that if your bike is really start having a hard time starting and it's also overfilling or flooding it, if the, the bowl is leaking constantly, this would typically be the problem area for that. Um, so this is a good thing to just keep in mind if you're having really bad carb issues, this could be the culprit right here. Um, I'm gonna reuse this one because I don't have a full rebuild kit, but I, I think this one will be okay for now. Um, I did also notice as I was taking this apart, there's an additional O-ring on the, the intakes or the uh, outport side. So I wanna make sure that we pull this off before we clean it too so that we don't destroy the O-ring. Um, we do have to take off the, the plug for the, the carburetor heater. Um, again, this is a strange thing that Yamaha does. Um, some of their scooters have this too. Um, if you live in warmer states, it doesn't necessarily matter as much, but this helps to vaporize the fuel to help it burn better when it gets into the combustion chamber. Kind of a cool idea. Um, as far as I know, it's not widely used, but you do have to remove that before you can clean the whole, whole car body. Interesting. So I'm going to leave it on the threads because it doesn't appear to be in the body. It appears to just be on the sensor. So I'm not going to clean the sensor. I'm going to keep the sensor out of the material. Now I do need to pull the needle cam out. This is the, uh, the needle that goes up and down inside of the body. I need to pull that out. And I think the easiest way is with a pair of pliers to just lift up on this cam. You can see the needle comes right out. I'm gonna keep this assembly intact, but I am gonna wipe down the needle here. because you can see, there is a little bit of ethanol residue on that. And I want this to be a smooth surface. So I'm not gonna clean it in the solution, but I am gonna clean it with a shop towel. But I wanna keep this whole cam assembly together so that nothing falls off like that just did. All right, so I'm gonna look over the carb body, make sure there's no other rubber or plastic pieces in there. I'm gonna get my flashlight, make sure I see everything. Apologies if this doesn't come across in the video too well, but I'm just making sure I'm not gonna damage anything by soaking it. 
I see no other rubber, no plastic. Again, the brass bushings are fine. I'm not going to worry about those. All right. So this stuff here I have is called Gunk Parts Cleaner. It is a carburetor cleaner with a basket inside of it. Super convenient, so much easier than using an aerosol carb cleaner. But I'm gonna take the main jet, put it in the basket, the pilot jet, put it in the basket, the whole carb body without any plastic, any rubber, anything like that. And I'm going to soak that in this solution. Um, it does say you can soak it overnight. I find it doesn't need to take that long. Typically I leave it in there for a couple hours. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this slightly open so that it doesn't build any pressure if any gases are released. And I'm gonna go and enjoy myself a cold beer while this soaks. Check back in a little bit. So I have removed the carb body from the solution. Um, I do still have the jets and the carb bowl floating in that solution. I should add, this is caustic. This can damage your skin, it can damage your eyes. Do not breathe it in, do not stick your hands in it. If you do, please go wash your hands quickly. Um, it is not meant for washing hands, so be careful with that. Make sure that when you take this out, you do your best to get all the fluid off onto a cloth before you handle it because you don't want that stuff on your skin. Um, you can see it's on my skin now, so I will do what I can to keep myself somewhat clean of that using shop towels. Uh, once we have let this soak, an air compressor is your friend. If you don't have an air compressor, you can use a can of compressed air, which you can buy from a lot of different places, including Walmart. But with the compressed air, we just want to blow through all the passages. We want to make sure that we clean through everything. All right, I have blown through all of the passages. So the pilot jet is finally cleaned out. I did let it soak overnight in the parts cleaner. Um, I did use compressed air, and I even had to use a tiny part of the metal just to poke through, and I'm now able to see light through it. The hole is so tiny, I do not think that we will be able to get light shown through in the camera, but it is cleaned, it is passed through, so let's reassemble the carburetor. Um, since I had the pilot jet in my hand, let's start with that. The pilot jet goes in the smallest of the two holes of the carburetor, thread it in by hand. These are brass, which is a soft metal, so be careful when you're putting them back together. You do not need to crank these down like you are building a jet. Just a little bit of pressure to tighten them down. The main jet goes back in the bigger of the two holes here. Same thing, tighten it down. Just a little snug. When reassembling the float, make sure it's going the correct direction. Um, you could always refer back to your service manual if you have one. Um, I like to refer back to video footage. It makes it very easy to see which way it came apart. But on this TTR50, this little tang right here points down. So slide the needle valve onto the float. Make sure it points the same direction as the tang. And then you can take the carb body, line up the needle float with that little hole, put it in, and then the pin goes back in the same direction that you took it out. And it was a little snug before, so let's make sure we push it back in. And we're good to go. Jets and float are all back in place. Should be good to put the bowl back on. Don't forget the gasket. This is a rubber gasket. Be careful when taking this off and putting it back on. Um, if it's too old, if it's cracked, if it is ripped, replace it, get a new set, replace the whole thing. It just makes it easier. You don't have to worry about leaks in the future. I think we're good to go. Four screws back in the bowl. Please don't use impact guns or drills on these types of screws. The screws themselves are really soft. They will strip out and then you have a lot more trouble getting them off the next time. I do like to tighten these in an alternating fashion. Eh, probably not necessary, but just a habit I've developed over the years. All right. 
should be good. Put the gaskets back on where they belong. Going to put the heater back in. Again, I did not take that white paste off. I'm going to leave that on there. Don't forget the little seal that goes in the throttle slide. There is an O-ring around the outside where the throttle attaches to. And then these slide on top with three Allen keys. All right, so remember I said before, this has a spring on it. This is the throttle. As you twist the throttle, it twists this. There is a piece here of the spring that will lock in to that little notch right there. So as you're sliding this in, try to line it up with that piece of the spring down the bottom of the notch. And then hook the tab around the spring. The last piece to go on is gonna be the cam for the needle, the main needle from the, the throttle. So there's a little set screw. I will put the set screw in first, just loosely put it in and then turn the cam just a little bit so that the screw can set down where it needs to. You'll hear it click as you turn and then you'll see they are connected. Tighten that down and then put the cap back on. And that should be it. This cap goes back on here. We've got the screws over on the table. Let's go get this car back on the bike. Now there is another screw right here that I took out of this spot. This is for a throttle lock. If you put the screw all the way in, it prevents the throttle from turning all the way. But my son is old enough now, I decided to take this out. We're gonna leave it out and see how it goes. So we've charged the battery. We've checked the air box. We've checked all the electrical connect connections, spark plug included, and we've cleaned the carburetor. Let's see if this will fire now. Remember, we had to turn all the switches off, so we're gonna start from the beginning. We're gonna turn on the main switch, turn on the run switch, turn the fuel on. Fuel switch there, oh, and we have a leak. I didn't turn the drain screw back in. So the drain screw was just left open, so it would be flooding out the bottom of the bowl. Got to make sure you put that back in all the way before you turn the carburetor on or it will just drain fuel out like we just had happen there. Now the moment of truth. Let's see, will it fire on the first turn? It started, but I forgot the exhausts. All right, the exhaust is back on. The carburetor drain is closed. Let's try this again. Fuel switch on. Good, we have no drain of fuel. But now, it runs like it should. 
Now we're back and ready to ride. Hopefully we can go ride this weekend. On the TTR, we did need to do a full carburetor clean. It may be easier for you guys. Hopefully it is. But if this video was helpful, please let me know. But those are the four things you should look for when the bike doesn't start. See you guys out there on the track. Stay safe, everyone.